How's it going everyone, it's Harvey from Weather Spawn 5000 and in this video we're going to focus on the next few storm systems that are expected to move through the United States including a Midwest snowstorm that's expected to develop by next week as well as the potential of a Northeast snowstorm that could bring a large area of snow over a large portion of the Northern United States. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. So let's begin by taking a look at the GFS model forecast at this time and we do see that we are seeing much warmer than average temperatures throughout the eastern half of the United States now that this ridge has gone into the eastern half of the United States and um, created a strong southerly flow which is bringing those warm temperatures further northward and we're expected to continue to see much warmer than average temperatures over the next several days. However, there will be a couple of storm systems that will move through the western half of the United States that could bring some snow into the northern Midwest and eventually we should see these next few storm systems eventually dig into the eastern half of the towards the eastern half of the United States and eventually weaken this ridge at a point where we should see the cooler temperatures return for the eastern half of the United States for the potential of snowstorms to um, enhance as we head closer and closer into the middle portion of January where we do see a snowstorm develop a little bit of a nor'easter develop right around the 7th of January where we do see a heavy amount of snow throughout a large portion of New England as we do see that however we also see that there's a significant um, snowstorm that does develop based on the latest um, depiction of the GFS mall where we do see a heavy amount of snow throughout the northern portion of the Midwest where we do see heavy snow throughout the Dakotas this is as a result of a powerful trough that's expected to move ashore right along the coast of California and along with it we're going to see an abundance of cold air that could, should create an, an unstable enough environment right around the Midwest for for a major mid latitude cyclone to develop where we we could see potentially blizzard conditions associated with this storm if this storm's pressure does drop as low as what the gfs model is forecasting which is around the low 980s which should certainly enhance the wind component associated with this low pressure system and of course along with this cold air this cold air should create an unstable environment right around the eastern half of the united states for the potential of snow to develop right around um right around the northeast by the time we approach January 7th and the European model also agrees that this same trough will bring a higher level of cold air towards the eastern half of the United States if I were to continue to move forward we do see that this trough will eventually move further eastward and the European model, interestingly enough, does bring the snow a little bit further southward to where it impacts more of Nebraska and South Dakota and even brings some snow to Minneapolis and heavy snow throughout the northern portion of Wisconsin. And we still do see a strong southerly flow for the most part, which is preventing the snow from moving into the northeast. But there's still a high amount of uncertainty because we have to keep in mind that I'm going right around um, eight days out with this forecast. So there easily could be that scenario where just enough cold air moves in at the right time to bring a significant snowstorm to the northeast and it could be potentially more significant than what the european model is depicting and even what the gfs model is depicting we're gonna, just gonna need to wait and see how much cold air will be locked in place by the time the soul pressure system approaches the northeast as well as a tr um, exact trajectory of the soul pressure system because if this old pressure system were to move a little bit further eastward then that would allow the cold air to move more into the northeast to allow to enhance the possibility of snow to develop with this old pressure system however if this old pressure system were to take a track for a westward we see we'd see more of a southerly flow which would prevent the temperatures from getting cold enough for snow to fall in the northeast so the track will be another key component we're going to need to pay close attention to and that will be determined by the position of this jet stream dip because again if this jet stream dip um dips that um becomes a little bit more significant or Earlier than expected then we should see more on um, this old pressure system develop faster and that would uh, and that would um shift the jet stream winds from more of a um from a um westerly to easterly direction to more of a southerly to northerly direction which would steer the soul pressure system northward faster which would make it more of a rain event for the northeast however again if this jet stream dip is a little bit less significant early on then we're more likely to see the soul pressure system move a little bit further westward before it eventually moves northward which would bring more of a northerly wind component to the northeast for the chance of snow to be 
higher, which is exactly what the GFS model is forecasting, where the GFS model expects a significant enough jet stream dip for a low pressure sum or multiple low pressure sums to develop along the um, eastern portion of this mid latitude cyclone. However, it doesn't expect the jet stream dip to become significant until later, which will allow the cold air to eventually build into the northeast, and that would bring more of a northerly wind component for snow to develop, which is exactly what the GFS model is forecasting. So, still a high level amount of uncertainty. We're going to need to wait and see how strong northerly winds will be with this old pressure system. However, I will say with certainty that there likely will be a mid latitude cyclone that will move into the midwest and bring snow somewhere around the midwest again the track um, really has yet to be seen gonna need to uh, pay close attention to this ridge to determine the position of this jet stream but it's pretty likely at this point a mid latitude cyclone will eventually move into the midwest and we're gonna see an abundance of cold air behind it so i'd say more likely than not we're gonna see a, a stage where a snowstorm will develop in the united states the uh, exact question remains where it exactly will develop because i will determine if many places will experience snow or not but i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days however um it, let's say if the gfs mo um, forecast model was correct when it comes to snowfall if i were to continue to move forward with the snowfall forecast based on latest run of the gfs model we see a heavy amount of snow for the northern midwest where we do see well over a foot of snow throughout a large portion of the western half of south dakota as well as the eastern half of north dakota and we even do see over a foot or so in the northwestern portion of minnesota and we do see some snow as well associated with another um low pressure that's going to move into the midwest a little bit earlier where you could expect where you could expect three to six inches of snow for a large portion of nebraska and taking a look at the northeast we do see that the gfs model does want to bring a heavy amount of snow over the large portion of the interior northeast where we do see over a foot of snow in maine and you see boston is just outside the area of snow and we do see some snow um in the interior portion of massachusetts upstate new york gets involved in new york the new york city metropolitan area as well isn't very far from the snow depending on how much cold air will be locked in place by the time we approach um the weekend of january 7th that will that will play a big role in determining if you'll see snow in the coastal cities or not and even if you don't necessarily see snow in the bigger cities along the east coast you there's still that possibility that with the next um with the next um jet stream um snowstorm that you could experience snow because what's expected to come behind this cold front with this mid latitude cyclone is much quarter temperatures and that and a much more significant jet stream dip which could set the stage for more snowstorms to develop and move up along northeast of our to move forward with the gfs model forecast we do see the jet stream dip becomes more significant and we see an abundance of cold air move into the northeastern half of the united states so with this jet stream dip we could potentially expect more clipper systems or um the a higher possibility of snowfall than we're gonna see over the next week because the temperatures will be cold enough and this jet stream and this significant jet stream dip could create an unstable enough environment for a significant snowstorm to develop so that's only something to keep in mind as we approach the mid-january time frame where we could be back to cooler than average temperatures for northeast for the possibility of snow to, um to of course rise as we approach um the middle portion of january but we're still a high level so 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 a lot to talk about over a lot of variables to take pay close attention to gonna need to just wait and see till this low pressure system moves ashore along california which will be right around this weekend we're gonna need to pay close attention to the strength of this because the strength will determine the position of the jet stream and that will determine who exactly will receive the heavy snowfall associated with this old pressure system so i'll keep you guys update over the next several days it's gonna take i'd say right around two to three days before we really get a certain uh higher certainty with the forecast especially for the midwest and it might be, take a little bit longer before we reach a higher level of certainty for the northeast regarding your possibility of snowfall but i'll keep you guys updated but what i could say with certainty is that temperatures should um should return back to normal or even cooler than average by the time we approach the january 
February 5th to 6th time frame for most of the United States as this mid latitude cyclone should create a strong enough northwesterly flow for temperatures to cool down and we likely will see snow associated with this mid latitude cyclone the only question remains where so I'll keep you guys updated but um Taking a look at the North Atlantic Oscillation, of course, we're expecting to move into a positive North Atlantic Oscillation phase as we approach the early part of January, so that would reduce the chance of cold and heavier snowfall as a result of, as a result of stronger jet stream winds trapping the cooler air right around the Arctic regions, but there's, of course, that doesn't at all um, completely um, completely remove the chance of snowfall for the United States, as you still could experience a significant snowstorm, despite the fact we're in a positive North Atlantic oscillation. Just keep, just take note that, thanks to the fact that we're in a positive North Atlantic oscillation, we're more likely than not going to experience warmer than average conditions, and, um, and the chance of snow to definitely be reduced as a result of a positive North Atlantic oscillation which is probably the reason why temperatures will be a lot warmer than average for much of the united states thanks to the fact that the jet stream winds are a lot stronger so it's trapping that cold air well further um well to the north of the united states now take a look at my forecast when it comes to this next major northeast um, winter storm you do see that the uh, i shifted my forecast a little bit from yesterday i'm bringing now more of the heavy snow a little bit further northward based on the shift we've seen with the computer models but still keep in mind there's um we could still see a major shift where that snow can move southward um where there's still a lot of days ago to really get this forecast ironed out so i'll keep you guys updated and stay tuned for further updates but anyways guys i uh, thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and i hope you guys have a great day